networking is something that I think historically until 2020 hit was something that was a way that a lot of people got their, their name out there. Yeah. Is, is there something that you did differently in the last 14 months or so uh, to, to get attention other than your name? Uh, yeah. And then um, what, it, what has worked for you just in general, historically, as we're kind of, it seems like hitting the, uh, the end of this, the vid as Kevin yeah, says. Absolutely. Um, I think to the credit of our, our entire team and, and the shout out to, to my team, uh, shout out to Priscilla and, and her team on the communications program. I think what we did, like, like you guys did the same thing. I mean, many, many of those who, who really pivoted quickly in the Hampton Roads community, um, jumped on the ability to, to use zoom and use some of these platforms to be able to continue to connect with the membership. Um, is it the ideal way to be able to network? No, but um, it still gave people an opportunity to connect a name with a face, even if it was on a screen. Um, so almost immediately after going into lockdown, we started doing some small group networking sessions that were done via Zoom um, that enabled people to be able to connect. Um, ironically, uh, sadly, in some cases, because there was so little happening, it did allow people the time to be able to get on these pretty regularly and be able to continue to connect. So it did allow a lot of our members to be able to, to get on these events weekly, continue to talk to one another, continue to build some sort of rapport with one another. Um, and even as we've transitioned into some of these hybrid events, we've done a lot to stay within the guidelines that were set for us by the governor we did a lot of small group networking sessions. And ironically, what we have found is that in many ways, those have been more effective than a lot of the larger networking events that we had done in the past. I mean, when we did a traditional um, member reception, we might have 50, 60, 70 people. But you all know, you show up at a room with 50, 60, 70 people, and you're there for an hour, it's impossible. It is literally impossible to get to know that many people in that shorter period of time. So you still were only connecting with a handful of them. What we found is since we've moved to these smaller group networking sessions, the connections are so much stronger because we get to know one another better. We get to tell our stories better. Um, and on top of that, we're, we're finally somewhat face to face with that. So we've really done an, an awful lot of pivoting. I mean, it, it seems like every month or two over the last 18 months, we've been changing and adapting and doing different things just to kind of stay within the guidelines that have been set for us. Maybe too much of a personal question, but are, are you wearing like gym shorts right now? I'm actually wearing fishing shorts right at this moment. <laughs> uh, everything, everything from, from the, the suit top down is basically uh, shorts and uh, fishing shoes. So absolutely. The, co the, the COVID mullet. I, I did. Yes, I exactly. <laughs> That was a good answer. I was not expecting that. Okay. Uh, so in that world of, of kind of hybrid of uh, I guess we're starting to see a little bit of that where people are doing some digital, some form of digital, some back in, in, in person to some extent. Yeah. It seems like big events also are figuring out a way to do, to do hybrid and make money off of it where, you know, you might've historically had, let's just say a thousand people go to Virginia beach convention center yes. and that was it. And if you were there, you were there. Now you're saying maybe that's a, that's a smaller in person, but there's let or there's even more people that are watching around the world. It, is it is that what you think is going to be the future? Like let's let's hear your prediction on how like yeah. events as an organization who puts on a ton of events a year. Like do you see the hybrid model being the future, or do you think we're going to go back one way? Where where do you kind of see that? Yeah, I think you nailed it. Um, our Virginia Beach state of the city was exactly what you just described, and and uh -huh. you're absolutely right. Um, in a traditional year, we can get approximately 1,200 people at the Virginia Beach State of the City, which, which I believe is typically the single largest event we host during the year. Um, and the place is packed. I mean, it's an absolutely great event. It's an incredible way to network and connect with people. Is that um, at capacity too with that 1200 number? It's probably pretty close because that, of tables. Yeah, because we use the ballroom in that particular case. Right. So yeah, I mean, we basically can't get any bigger than that. Um, so to give you an idea, when we had the limitations going into this year's state of the city for Virginia Beach, which was a couple months ago, um, I, I don't even remember how many people we had in the room. It might have been 10 
for if I remember correctly, because at that time, I think we were still pretty locked down as far as number of people. Um, so what we found, though, was you had several hundred people who actually viewed it on live stream while it was happening. And to a certain extent, I think some of us were kind of like, oh, man, that's a bummer. I mean, we, we could have had maybe 500 more people view the event afterwards. Um, yet when we went back a couple days later, we were already at 17, 18, 1900 people who had viewed it. And I believe last time I checked, it was well over 2000 people had viewed it. So even if you backed out a few people who maybe went back and looked at it a second time, the point was from a, from an eyeball standpoint, from whether it's sponsorships, whether it's connecting with people, whether it's getting the, the message out, we essentially went from 1200 capacity to well over 2000 by the simple fact that we were able to live stream it. So Zach, I think you're absolutely right. I, I think, we, we almost can't go back because we've now almost kind of set a standard to this point that there's always going to be that in-person connection. There, there, there is absolute value with being able to show up at the convention center, shake somebody's hand, connect with them in a one-on-one -on -one environment, um, get to know people. Um, but I think the idea that there's going to be an expectation that even if it's not live stream, that there's at least a video or some ability to go back and, and watch these and give more people more eyeballs to these. I think sponsors are going to expect it. I think viewers are going to expect it. I think the, the community as a whole, not just the business community, but the general community is going to expect it. So, um, in well, many you guys ways, aren't even making money off of the stream yet, right? And so that, that's the next at least it doesn't sound like it, right? So it, yeah. it seems like there are a lot of events that had done that in the past, but I guess accelerated that. Uh, you know, Tim and I have been saying this since the beginning. COVID is just accelerating things that were already going to happen by five to seven <laughs> years, right? Yes. And so you see an event like this where you guys just said, oh, there's 500 people here. Restrictions or not, let's say you're at 1,200 in person, right? Yep. And that's that capacity, Right. Well, now or this could be, you know, from a music, uh, a music perspective. OK, we're at the amphitheater's 20,000 people there. But guess what? There's 20,000 that also want to see it. You could start okay. throwing on an extra 10, 15, 20 dollars ahead to see that live show. And guess what? People made a lot more money. Right. It's like Bush Gardens trying to figure out how to make money year round. It's just yep. being creative and being figuring out a revenue model that makes sense. And if someone wants to see that thing live and you guys can profit off of it, then it makes sense to me. Right. I mean, yeah. you know, it's it, yeah. Absolutely. And I think it? and I think there's a revenue stream there, whether you want to charge for the individual eyeballs or the not. Sponsor Meaning, banner on there. There's so exactly. many things that could be done. That's there. exactly yeah. right. So even yeah. if you still want to give the viewership the ability to do it for free, there's always that ability to go back to sponsors and say, look, I'm either going to charge more or bring on more sponsors because I can get you in front of more eyeballs. Um, once we get you up on the screen. So, yeah, I think there's multiple revenue sources the hell out of a there. Sale, right. Yeah. I mean, why wouldn't you do that? Hey, by the I way, know. instead of this $10,000 thing for you, we're going to get you three times the amount of people. Yeah. And they're going to actually, because of the way that they're streaming it, they're going to see your logo more. Yeah. So and we're going to get a period of time. Yeah. 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 Yep. And that's for nonprofits. It's for for profits. I mean, there's, it's a business model that I think you're going to see across the board. I mean, it, for service providers that are, that are going to be able to do that, I, I think um, uh, there's just so many opportunities to do that, that to, to your point, I think we're headed there, but I think this just became a catalyst for getting people to go for everybody who said, ah, I don't want to buy, buy the equipment right now, or it's, it's just, well, those are the too hard. Will, right. Those yeah. are the people who won't move into that are the ones that are yeah. going to be complaining about it months later. Like, Oh, how come I didn't do this? Whatever. Yep. Uh, because you weren't willing to go with it. Right. Yeah. It's, it's not even like a risk in this kind of situation. Like, you know, the eyeballs are there. Yeah. Like, and it forced us it to do it. I mean, you either did it or you just immediately fell behind people. So it was a, uh, it was definitely a weeding out process pretty quickly. So. Yeah. I mean, I've been directly involved within our entrepreneurial community for years. And the most common question I get is Tim, I want to get involved, but I don't know what events I should attend. Well, start wheel eliminates that pain point because we consolidate all the events you should attend into a single calendar. Now you'll be in the know and see where to spend your time. Gone is the need to search multiple websites and calendars. Just head to startwheel.org and see for yourself. That's startwheel.org.